Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a very interesting show for you. Man, what a day. Yep, can you say hot seat? These three guys are going to know all about the hot seat after today. The Miami-Florida uh, game. Oh, my gosh. Train wreck city. Dabo. We got to talk about Dabo. And we've got uh, our boy Shane Beamer. Shane just survived Old Dominion. Yeah. The trucking company. Old Dominion. You've heard of them? Yeah. I guess they've got a team. Anyway, they barely survived. <laughs> These three guys, uh, they got issues, and we're going to talk all about it. All right, Georgia and Clemson. Georgia just beat the absolute dog crap out of uh, Clemson 34-3. to Jeez. It was a tight game through the first half, 6 to nothing. but then Georgia just put the hammer down. And Clemson's offense, again, it's just – they're just no good. Their, their offense is just not very good. It just isn't. Uh, Klubnik, who I thought would eventually turn into a good quarterback, has really struggled, especially in big games. He's just not played well at all. Their defense is doing all they can. It's just at some point you've got to help the defense. And they were unable to do it. They just could not give them any rest and couldn't give them any points. You look here at 18 for 29, 142 yards, one interception with a QBR of 40. That's a guaranteed loss every time. They had one guy that ran the ball okay, which was Phil Moffa with a 3.7 average, and then everybody else, absolutely not. They ran for 46 yards, threw for 140. That's under 200. You will beat nobody like that. And I know Georgia has a lot to do with that, believe me. But you've got to be able to score some points, either that or quit scheduling teams like Georgia. Just stick to uh, the teams that you're comfortable playing. <laughs> and Georgia is obviously not one of them. Stay away from them, Alabama, Texas, Tennessee. Oh, that'll get them. But, yeah, you're going to have to. Carson Beck, 23 for 33, 278, two touchdowns. Very nice QBR, as usual. Ran the ball with 169 yards. Had, what's that, uh, 400, about 50 yards total. No problem. Once they got in the second half and kind of wore Clemson down, they did what uh, Georgia does. They just beat you down. And if Clemson can't score and they don't have a quarterback who can, you know, pull them out of the mess, it is what it is. Dabo, you're going to have to do something. And you're going to have to eventually get in the transfer portal. I know you're living in 1997 or 2007, but the transfer portal is a very real thing. And you've got some uh, problems that you need to fill. And you're going to have to get out of uh, a decade ago. I'm a grumpy old man. I don't like everything the way it is now compared to the way it used to be. Yeah. Here's the way it's going to be. Otherwise, they're going to invite you to leave at some point, and you can uh, stop taking phone calls on the radio show and do all that, that you want, but eventually the uh, boo birds are going to get you. So you're going to have to make some changes, and that's all I know to tell you. But you're on the hot seat. It's not the hottest of hot seats. I mean, it's not uh, on fire, but it's warming up. Let's just say that. Now let's talk about our boy Billy Napier. Oh my gosh. Shoo. Y'all just got absolutely spanked in the swamp. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. The water tastes good. Yes. That was hard to watch. It really was. Your crowd and the swamp did everything they could do. They were as loud as they could possibly be. Even when they were down two and three touchdowns, they were still cheering like crazy, making it as hard as they could on Miami. And Cam Ward, oh man, he had a field day out there. He looked to me like he was having like a practice or a scrimmage. I never seen anybody so relaxed out there. And at, at the swamp, no less, 26 for 35, almost 400 yards, three touchdowns, one INT. They ran the ball for 144 yards. They ran all over Florida's uh, offense, defensive line. That's over 500 yards, folks, at the Swamp. Your defense is just not getting it done. And Graham Mertz, unfortunately, got hurt. He wasn't doing anything at all, really. Hopefully, he's uh, not badly hurt. I couldn't really tell from the hit if it was like his shoulder or something, if maybe he hit his head at the end. I don't really know, but hopefully he's okay. He was 11 for 20 for 91 yards with an INT. They brought in DJ Lagway, who had one good series, but he wound up three for six with one INT. Uh, rushed the ball a little. You had that one big run. Without that, you didn't rush the ball at all. So offense was terrible, terrible, terrible. And I can tell you right now, Billy Napier is on the hottest of hot seats. I mean, it is firing up like you cannot believe. And these Florida fans, it, it's going to start right now. They're not going to put up with this. They're not going to tolerate it.
You have failed me for the last time. Yeah, they're not going to tolerate it, folks. I'm just telling you, he'd better turn it around quick. Or by October, he's going to be out of here. All right, now we got to get into our final guy, Shane Beamer, who survived a heck of a ball game. It reminded me of the uh, Jacksonville State game last year when they were looked like they were going to get beat in the fourth quarter, but then uh, Jacksonville State uh, turned it over, and then South Carolina got it and scored and uh, pulled it out at the end. Look at the turnovers. Old Dominion had four turnovers, and South Carolina had one. If you told me that, I would have thought South Carolina won by 35 points easy. Look at this score, 23 to 19. They were lucky to get out of there, and they had four turnovers go their way. That is pitiful. At home, that's at home. Just go home. That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me. Are you too good for your home? I can't believe it. That, that, that's ridiculous. At uh, Williams Bryce Stadium or whatever it's called, and Lenora Sellers, is, he's not ready. I've told you folks and told you folks. I like him. He appears to be a very nice young man, 4.0 student, great athlete, redshirt freshman. He's not ready for the SEC. If he played like that against Old Dominion, what's he going to play like against Georgia or any of these other SEC schools? It's going to be, it's going to be brutal. Folks, 10 for 23, 114 yards. That's not going to get it done. He ran the ball for 68 yards, y'all. so you got 174 yards in rushing, which was pretty good. Under 300 yards against Old Dominion. Under 300 yards. And what do you got behind uh, Lenoris, uh, Robbie Ashford or whatever his name is? That's not a good plan B. He's a good runner, but uh, his throwing's mm, it's kind of marginal. So I, this is not a good situation. And let's take a look at this schedule they've got. All right, you just had your easy game, Old Dominion, who you barely survived. You got to go to Kentucky. That's an L. You're going to play LSU and Akron. You can probably beat it. I don't know. Akron looked pretty good there for a while against Ohio State. I don't know. I don't like you against Kentucky and LSU. Then it gets brutal. Look at these next games. Number six, Old Miss. Number five, Alabama. Number 16 at Oklahoma. That ought to be fun. Playing Alabama and Oklahoma on the road. Then you get Texas A&M. And Vanderbilt, by the way, just beat Virginia Tech. Then you get Missouri. You do get one break with Walford and then Clemson. Look, that is, that's vicious. That right there is vicious, folks. Look at that ending of this <laughs> schedule. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, anyway, hot seat. Yeah, you won the game, luckily, and... Uh, that, they, oh, gosh, if you lost that game, I don't, just who knows. So you might as well go ahead and get ready for the hot seat to warm up because once you start hitting this, uh, this schedule hard, it's not going to be pretty. I told you I saw you around 4-8 and eight this season. That's, I'm sticking with that. I feel more comfortable at 4-8 and eight than anything. And then you got to make a decision. Do you want to pay him a bunch of money or do you want to find somebody else? We'll see how it goes. I don't see an upside on this season at all. I don't. If you don't have a – you need a strong quarterback – who's seasoned. You had that with uh, Spencer Radler. I told you to go in the transfer portal and get you a seasoned guy who knows what he's doing and develop Lenore Sellers. You didn't do that. So now you've got uh, plan A and plan B, and I don't like either plan right now. Lenoris could be a good quarterback long-term, but he's got, he's got a ways to go. His fundamentals aren't there and his footwork's not there. I saw that in the spring game. That's not going to change all of a sudden. That takes time. And when the pressure gets hot, those fundamentals fall apart. That's why you've got to have really good ones. Anyway, sorry to have to hit you with this uh, bad news, but it is what it is, folks. You've got three coaches that are they're feeling it. And as far as my team, the Vols, we look great. Nico Iamaliava, good grief. He looked amazing. He had, we had like 35 points in the first quarter, and he threw for over 300 yards, broke a record, most yards thrown in a half ever in the history of UT. So things are rocking and rolling up here. You got to get the right coach, got to get the right quarterback. Anyway, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's continue to cover all these big sports stories. If you've not subscribed, boom, 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 hit that little button. I would appreciate it. Won't cost you a dime. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk J.